This Equipment World video is brought to you by Philips 66 Lubricants, keeping the world running smoothly. So the best selling vehicle in the United States for the last 45 years is soon going to be available with 100% less engine. That's a pretty remarkable statement to make, especially when you consider that it's a pickup. What's going on guys, Wayne here. So look, after a couple of years of hype building, Ford last week finally took their wraps off of its highly anticipated all electric F-150, the very first completely battery powered truck that Ford has made. And what is so refreshing about this new truck is that it is an actual new electric vehicle that is aimed not at spectacle, but at practicality. It's just a normal everyday truck aimed at working people that just so happens to be powered by electricity. They're calling this new truck the F-150 Lightning, obviously appropriate because of this truck's all electric powertrain, but that Lightning name also represents the resurrection of a model name that became pretty iconic between the years of 1993 and 2004 and remains so to this day. These trucks were Ford SVT developed and as such, they were really all about speed. They could accelerate zero to 60 in about six or seven seconds. By 2003, they had a top speed of 147 seven miles per hour, which is an insane figure when you think about hopping in a pickup truck and going 150 miles an hour down a straightaway. And they were powered by big V8 engines. And they were really pioneers in the sense that they were the first kind of commercially successful purpose-built enthusiast pickups to hit the market. Now, with the legacy of that F-150 Lightning name in mind, it's very cool that these new Lightning trucks are named not just for, you know, a convenient pun, but also for their performance as well. The 2022 F-150 Lightning is the fastest accelerating and best handling F-150 that Ford has ever produced according to Ford, which is especially interesting given the fact that Ford also makes another very powerful and very quick truck in the F-150 Raptor. In fact, just to kind of drive home how excited Ford was to unveil this truck during the event, uh, Ford said, and I quote, it hauls ass. It might as well have a Superman cape and a Captain America shield. All right, so superhero comparisons and impressive performance aside, what impresses me the most about this new 2022 F-150 Lightning is that Ford has seemingly been able to pack a lot of capability into this truck, a lot of impressive technology too, you know, but they've also made a lot of design decisions with this truck, and they've also put into place a pricing strategy that seems really built around keeping this truck within reach of the average customer. It's the first super truck for the working class. Let's get into it. All right, so let's just get this out of the way at the top and talk about pricing because holy crap, Ford has managed to pack a lot of capability into these trucks, into their very first battery powered pickup. I think that, that we can't forget that part. This is a first generation product. And they've done that while managing to make it affordable for those who will actually put that capability to use. What a refreshing concept. Pricing for the 2022 F-150 Lightning starts at $39,974. Now that is for the base model, but as we're gonna get into in a second, there's a lot to like about the base model, but going back to that $39,000 price point, that is a big one. It was a big deal for Ford to get under that $40,000 mark because that really is where a lot of EVs are kind of being judged in terms of their ability to be successful commercially. The average sale price in 2020 of a new vehicle in the United States was right around $38,000. This is about $1,000 above that. But the important thing to note here is that that is before the $7,500 in federal EV tax credits that Ford as an automaker is still eligible for. So technically, you're really looking at a $32,000 to $33,000 truck once you apply that tax credit. Now the XLT model, uh, that pricing is gonna start at $52,974. Even then, you're still looking at only about $45,000. And that is, a, that is a really attractive price point for a first generation electric vehicle. There's just a lot of capability that comes with this truck, with every trim level of this truck, from that base model all the way up to like, say like a platinum. Uh, one of the standard features that comes across all the lineups is standard four x four. But with this pricing, I do kinda wanna point out right here that Ford has made a very, different first move 
with its electric truck than GM did with the unveiling of the Hummer EV. That monstrosity starts at $100,000. It's got, you know, crab steer and all these off-road features, these other features that have kind of weird names. And it really, really seemed like it was 100% in reaction to the Cybertruck. Tesla's not gonna come in here and out extreme us. We've got the best battery technology with Ultium. Our, our first move is gonna be the super truck to rule all super trucks. It seemed more aimed at Tesla than it did at actual customers. That $100,000 price point, you know, and basically it being a GMC truck and not a Chevy, felt like they were placing it out of reach on purpose. It was prohibitively designed so that a lot of people wouldn't buy it because it is a first generation truck. There's a lot of kinks that need to be worked out and that's why they're kind of taking three years to roll out the three separate trim models. It's kind of a mess and again, it, none of it seemed aimed at making customers happy. In contrast, the F-150 Lightning seems designed for regular people. Ford definitely wants as many people as possible to buy this truck. The Lightning is much more practical, as I said at the top, than it is spectacle. And I think, I think that's why this truck will be successful. Maybe the most apparent sign of this truck's practicality is its exterior design, what it looks like. But before we get into that, I do wanna take a quick second right here to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Philip 66 Lubricants. Look, construction and mining are tough environments, not just on the people doing these jobs, but on the machines that they're using to get those jobs done. And when you depend on a machine to move massive amounts of dirt in as little time as possible and in extreme hot and cold conditions, these machines need the toughest lubricants possible to protect them. See, Philip 66 has put thousands of hours into testing products like Gardol ECT, and with proven wear and corrosion protection, it's clear why 60% of the thousands of mining operations in the United States trust one brand to keep their equipment going, Philip 66 Lubricants. So look, whatever you've got, graders, end loaders, dump trucks, Philip 66 will protect it. You can even call the Philip 66 technical hotline and talk to experts one-on-one -on -one about their product, Philip 66 Lubricants, keeping the world running smoothly. It just looks like a normal pickup. I mean, and when you think about that and the unveiling of the Hummer EV, and the Tesla Cybertruck, honestly, this thing is just, it's just kind of nice. It's making electric vehicles seem attainable rather than something that's not ready yet. Now, look, Ford did do a kind of funky wraparound LED bar in both the front and the back. I personally like those. It does give it kind of the, the uh, futuristic look, but really uh, apart from that, the rest of the body styling is identical to a 2021 you know, Crew Cab F-150. In fact, if you opt for the Lightning Pro, that's the $39,000 base model, you won't even have the wraparound LED light bars, making this base model even more normal looking. But obviously, once you get below that aluminum body, that's where things are going to start to differ quite a bit on the F-150 Lightning. Now, just like every other electric vehicle that has hit the market, the 2022 F-150 Lightning sits on a skateboard chassis where the entire powertrain of the truck is pretty much located between the frame rails. The battery array is nestled there between the two axles. And look, Ford hasn't offered up a lot of information about the actual battery technology at play here, such as capacity uh, and you know how many batteries are actually located there in the chassis. That's pretty much in contrast to GM. GM is very proud of its Ultium battery technology. It talked a lot about the battery technology that went into play on the Hummer EV, but Ford has decided not to do that, but but we do know a few details. For starters, there are going to be two battery pack options offered on the F-150 Lightning. Ford hasn't noted the actual specific capacities of these batteries in terms of what they can store, but what we do know is the range. The standard range battery pack is going to get you 230 miles of range before you'll need a recharge, while the extended range battery will give you up to 300 miles of range. Now, the weight of those battery packs, along with an independent rear suspension, now this is actually the first independent independent rear suspension that Ford has placed into an F-150. Those two things combined with the Lightning's overall lower center of gravity provide a more stable ride than its gas and diesel powered counterparts while also reducing steering roll. Now I mentioned earlier that 4x4 is standard across the entire F-150 Lightning lineup and that's because no matter which Lightning pickup you buy, no matter what level you buy, every one of them comes with the same dual motor electric drivetrain with one motor powering each axle. And the 4x4 system on these trucks has four selectable drive modes, normal, sport, 
off-road and tow haul. And if you do wanna go off-road, you're not gonna have to worry about mixing your electric truck with wet conditions. Now the battery array itself has been put into a waterproof casing and it's also surrounded by crash absorption protection to protect it from just the nastiest of conditions. Plus Ford says the truck has even been tested at temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, one thing we know about electric vehicles, colder temperatures can have an impact on the range of an EV. Ford hasn't said what impact colder temperatures will have on range, but they did note that, you know, the truck will at least turn on <laughs> in up to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. Just, you know, maybe you should expect about 100 to 150 miles less range. Now there is a distinction to make here in terms of kind of, I guess, available powertrains when it comes to the amount of available horsepower that these trucks make. And I guess the best way to think about it is if you, you know, you were looking at uh, an F-150, one was a, had a V6 in it and the other one had an inline four in it. You know, obviously the inline four is gonna make less horsepower than the V6. It's kind of a similar situation here with the kind of standard range battery pack, which is smaller and the extended range battery pack, which is larger. The standard range battery pack, Ford says that they are targeting to give you 426 horsepower, the electric equivalent of 426 horsepower on that battery pack. If you opt for the extended range, you get, you know, uh, basically 140 horsepower more uh, on top of your extended range. So the extended range battery pack not only gives you that boost up to 300 miles of range, but also boosts the horsepower to 563 horsepower. The other kind of important thing to note here is that torque is the same on both models. It's 775 pound feet of equivalent torque, no matter which battery pack you opt for. A few more important specs to throw out. The Lightning has a maximum payload capacity of right around 2,000 pounds, and it has a max towing capacity of 10,000 pounds. And look, while the move to battery power hasn't apparently shaved off capability in a very meaningful way, I mean, 2,000 pounds of payload and 10,000 pounds of max towing, those were uh, very nice numbers to see. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that very many people expected maybe that high on, on both ends. I mean, there are some caveats like the 2,000 pounds of maximum payload comes uh, on the standard range model because that battery, for instance, is lighter so you can have a bit more payload. You're gonna have less payload capability on the uh, extended range battery because it's heavier. So there's gonna be little things like that to work out. But Ford is also being tight-lipped on how, you know, if you're, if you're towing 10,000 pounds on the back of one of these trucks, how much that is going to impact your range. Because the heavier load that you're towing or the more payload you have, that's gonna reduce the amount of range you get out of one of these trucks. We don't know how much, if I had to guess, it's probably pretty substantial and that's probably why they're not ready to say anything yet. But even though Ford isn't saying anything specific about the impact on range, you know, one new feature on these trucks does show that they are aware of it and are at least, you know, doing something about it. Ford has integrated onboard scales into this F-150, giving you and the truck the ability to monitor payload in real time. And that is in order to allow the truck to provide accurate range calculation. So that's literally exactly what we're talking about. We don't know what the impact is gonna be, but we do know that Ford has at least made design decisions around trying to figure out and give you the most accurate range in front of you while you're driving the truck. You load it down with 2,000 pounds. The truck, you know, maybe you had 200 miles of range in front of you, you load it down, and maybe that updated number is now closer to 100, maybe it's 75. So it should be able to give you that real-time adjustment according to what burden you're putting on the truck. Now, speaking of range, what about charging? Now I have a whole separate video that's coming up that deals with the challenge of charging uh, and how Ford is gonna have to figure some of that out and how you're gonna have to figure some of that out if you do opt for one of these trucks and that's coming up soon. But for this video in particular, we're just gonna stick to the highlights. This is a kind of a crazy sentence to say, but depending on the charger you have at your disposal, charging up the F-150 Lightning can take anywhere from one hour to as many as three whole days. Now that one hour figure from, you know, roughly 15% to 100%, so almost taking it from zero to 100 in terms of a charge, that figure applies to if you're out and you're looking for a public charging station and you luck out and you find a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. That is by far the best charging situation you can find. Uh, you know, in about 30 minutes, maybe you can get about 50% uh, range and that'll be enough to get you home in an hour. It'll 
get you another 300 miles, between 230 and 300 miles. The more than three day figure applies to what happens when you plug this truck into your standard 120 volt outlet in the garage. Now that sounds like a terrible situation, specifically that three day charging situation. Uh, and I'm gonna get more into that in that uh, upcoming video that I mentioned, but Ford is at least trying to help out this situation a little bit. They're, they're aware of the challenge with charging these vehicles, and they are actually gonna throw in an 80 amp at-home charging station as standard equipment on this truck but only if you opt for the extended range battery. Now that at home charging station will give you 30 miles of range for every hour that you charge, meaning that you will be able to fully charge your truck overnight every night. Now on the base model, the Lightning Pro that we mentioned earlier with standard range, Ford says it is providing commercial customers with a 32 amp mobile charger. And that charger will be able to charge the truck from 15% to 100% in about 14 hours. So I think the conclusion after hearing all of that is that for those that need a lot of range on their pickup, a lot of the time, uh, who are used to the 500 and now the, the hybrid F-150 can actually get you up to 750 miles per tank of fuel. For those that are used to that and depend on that flexibility and range, obviously the F-150 Lightning is not you know ready for prime time yet. But it could be a very interesting option for you know, landscapers or contractors or, or plumbers, anyone else in the trades or, or anyone who uses their truck for some other kind of actual work that you know, don't drive any more than 250 miles a day, a day or, or won't have to drive more than 250 miles in a day. And here's another interesting little tidbit behind the development of this truck. You know, Ford says it analyzed 145 million miles of pickup truck telematics data and found that 95% of its commercial you know, fleet type customers, 95% of those customers who are using their trucks for work drive less than 174 miles per day. So 174 would fit neatly uh, below even the standard range F-150 Lightning. Again, as we mentioned earlier, the base truck is the Lightning Pro. It's called Pro because it's being aimed at pros. Now, like we said earlier, that one starts at $39,000 and it's being aimed specifically at commercial and fleet owners. Plus, Ford says that that truck represents the lowest cost of ownership of any pickup that it has ever made. No engine maintenance, no fuel bill, obviously. And Ford actually estimates that over the course of eight years or 100,000 miles, it will actually reduce a fleet's maintenance cost for a pickup by 40%. Plus another nice feature for those who are using these trucks for actual work is the presence of Ford's Pro Power onboard generator, uh, which has been carried over to this truck from the 2021 F-150 models. And there are a ton of outlet locations on the F-150 Lightning in both the front and the rear of the pickup. Speaking of the front of the truck, I am very pleased to uh, tell you guys that Ford has made great use of the space in front of the truck where that engine used to live. This new frunk or front trunk has 400 liters of storage space and Ford says it can haul up to 400 pounds of payload. So just think about it, you know, how nice will it be uh, for those who use this as a work truck to be able to put you know, tools or valuables or whatever else in the frunk lock that baby up instead of having to find space for it in the cab or to leave it vulnerable in the bed of the truck. That's a huge difference maker for anyone who's looking at one of these trucks for work. Plus, I mentioned just a second ago that Pro Power onboard generator, the outlets in the frunk actually provide up to 2.4 kilowatts of power. That's obviously enough for power tools or TVs and several other things. Plus, one other little nice design feature of this frunk is that Ford even thought to, you know, make this, you know, there's a faux grill now. There's no need to kind of cool an engine anymore, but you know, kind of going to the practicality of this truck and Ford trying to keep it, you know, looking familiar. Ford kept kind of the design language of a grill. It's not a real grill, but you know, in a normal truck, whenever you lift that hood up, just the hood comes up. And now, you know, if you're reaching into the engine compartment, you're still reaching over the grill. Well, there's no need for that anymore. So that faux grill comes right up with the hood so you have easy and low access to everything that's in the frunk. And while it's nice to have all that new storage space up there in the frunk, we can't forget about 
all of the storage space that's still back in the bed of the truck, along with 7.2 kilowatts more generator power to those separate outlets back there. So you're talking about basically about 9.6 kilowatts of available power on this truck, which is just a huge number. Continuing on with the bed, Ford has also made sure that this bed is designed for easy upfitting, and they even built working space uh, and a work platform into both uh, kind of the tailgate area there. You've got, you know, uh, basically some uh, nice uh, forms there that will hold clamps uh, and a couple of other things. And then the center console actually has a work platform that gives you enough space inside the truck uh, to put down a laptop or to uh, use it as kind of like a smaller desk. And another nice fleet specific feature is telematics. Now, the F-150 Lightning comes standard with a 4G LTE modem. And when you activate it, Ford begins providing you with connectivity services and EV specific operation data that are gonna you know, help businesses basically keep an eye on real time costs and uptime. Through the system dashboard, you can access how much power the truck is consuming, how quickly the trucks are charging, uh, your current available range. You can access in-cab driver coaching to kind of keep your operators kind of on top of things to, to keep those costs low. You can also access severe incident notifications and remote remote vehicle preconditioning. Now, vehicle preconditioning is not necessarily a new concept. You know, uh, pretty much as soon as we could remote start our vehicles with the key fob, you know, especially in the winter, we can get our car or truck warmed up uh, by turning the car on before we get in it. Um, but that is especially important when you're talking about an EV because you can actually do that while the car is charged in and then you don't have to ask the car to get the climate you know cool or hot when it's off the charger uh, which would eat into your available range so in sum this might be the most interesting or attractive fleet truck ever built and that's something that i did not think i was gonna say about the first ever all-electric f-150 plus i gotta admit it's pretty cool that a fleet truck can do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. In the end, I, I personally was very impressed by what Ford uh, is delivering here and the fact that they're delivering it very soon in, in 2022. How long has it been? Two years now almost since the Cybertruck was unveiled. There's basically some prototypes kind of floating around on various highways, but you know, it's not available for sale yet, and who knows when that will be. Uh, the the Hummer EV is is, is going to be coming out soon-ish. Even then, it's going to take three years for the lowest trim model to be available, the one that is closest uh, to being within reach of most customers. So the fact that Ford is going to start delivering these in spring of next year by itself is, is, is impressive, but I think there's just so much to like here. I was very impressed um, by... Uh, the product and you know, now we wait to see if Ford can actually deliver on the dates that it's set forth and obviously it's going to be interesting to see how many of these sell. Uh, Ford has been taking uh, $100 reservations through its website. I think the last figure I saw was that was more than 20,000 reservations have come in uh, at that $100 price point. Obviously, those are just reservations. You're basically handing over 100 bucks. It's refundable, but you're handing over 100 bucks to say, uh, I want a place in line to order these whenever they become, whenever the orders start coming in the fall of 2021. It's going to be, you know, the reservations are one thing. Who knows if those will actually translate to sales? Definitely going to be interesting to see. Uh, but uh, I, I think that already um, it's a very attractive option for fleets and tradespeople. And I think that was by design. I think that, and again, I think it's the much better business decision with Ford saying, range is going to be our limiting factor here. And I think that for any EV maker, that's what you have to come to. Range is our current limiting factor. Not everybody is going to be able to uh, basically compromise to a 230 or 300 mile range. And so, you know, this isn't the truck for everybody just yet. GM Basically, the way that they decided to take that is that, well, we'll our, we know this is a niche truck right now, so we're going to make it extremely expensive and we're going to sell it to the GMC, you know, uh, pro class or whatever they like to call it in their marketing. Uh, but Ford, on the other hand, said, you know, this might be a niche vehicle, but let's make it an affordable niche vehicle. Get some, um, you know, Ford is always very conscious of its uh, its commercial and its fleet customers. It likes to brag about the percentage of people in construction and the trades who own a Super Duty or an F-150. So I think Ford's approach is a lot smarter. They're basically saying, let's get buy-in with the people who actually buy our trucks for work 
and let them show everyone else that electric vehicles can you know do real work i and i i think that if i had to choose between those two strategies it's it's a no-brainer i think ford um, has taken the right approach here and i i ultimately think that will give them an advantage here moving forward uh it's already just a lot more palatable of a vehicle than what gm has put out all right guys well, that's going to wrap it up here at our initial look at the 2022 f-150 lightning but you know i've told you what i think i want to hear what you think do you think 230 to 300 miles of range is ready for prime time? What do you think of this truck as a work truck? I mean, it's got standard 4x4. Uh, I feel like it has enough range for, you know, most people, maybe not everybody. Um, but uh, yeah, it's got all that storage space. It's a, it's a real truck. It's got actual payload and towing capacities. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Obviously, we're going to be, you know, waiting very Im impatiently for an electric Super Duty to see just exactly what Ford brings there. But yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, found the information in it useful in any kind of way, do us a favor, hit that like button below. It really does help the channel out. And uh, if you want more coverage of pickups and construction equipment and everything else construction, head on over to our website at equipmentworld.com. And while you're there, subscribe to our daily newsletter. If you haven't already, subscribe right here on YouTube as well. Hit that subscribe button below and be sure to hit the bell, turn on notifications so that you're not missing any of our future videos. Speaking of which, that video about charging will be coming soon. So go ahead and subscribe uh, and get that notification for whenever that one drops and check that one out too. All right, guys, thank you so much for the time. We always appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one.